In this video, we demonstrate an end-to-end, -end, two-layer, hand-sewn bowel anastomosis using the Global Surgery Box. There are many different ways to anastomose bowel, including using the side of the loop of bowel instead of the end, using a stapler, or performing the anastomosis in one layer instead of two. In pediatric surgery, for instance, a single layer is often preferred. Additionally, we use the technique of the canal stitch to come around the corner of the anastomosis. This was done to show another version of suturing, and is one way to do it, but other techniques are equally effective. These are the materials that you will need for this simulation. Here are the materials we will use in our bowel anastomosis simulation today. We have two pipe cleaners attached to metal clips from the box. One pipe cleaner is colored darkly with a marker to distinguish between the proximal and distal bowel and the anastomosis. We also have two hair ties, the board with nails in it, and a clean workspace. To prepare the board, we folded each pipe cleaner in half and then threaded one end through the hole in the metal clip and threaded both loose ends through the other metal clip. We then folded them to secure it in place, like so. We then bent each pipe cleaner apparatus to fit around the nails in the board and attached a hair tie with edges curled outwards to each metal clip. Now we have our model prepared and these are the two ends of the bowel on which we will do the anastomosis. As an added step, you can secure the pipe cleaners by wrapping them around the nails, like so. Now we're ready to begin. This simulation can be done with an assistant, as shown here, or solo. Here, the assistant reflects back the distalmost edge of one bowel loop, exposing the intermucosal surface. The surgeon then takes a seromuscular bite from one end of the bowel, going from proximal to distal and taking care not to enter the lumen, and connects it to the other end of the bowel with a similar seromuscular bite going from distal to proximal. This is called a Lambert suture. The assistant cuts off the suture, leaving these as interrupted sutures and making sure to keep both ends of the suture towards the same side. They repeat the process and they're going to lay down a full posterior layer of interrupted seromuscular Lambert sutures, each approximately two to three millimeters apart between the two anastomotic segments. It is important to note that as you see here, they are going through the full thickness of the hair tie and thus showing a full thickness bite. But on real bowel tissue, we would only go through the seromuscular layer. This is a limitation of the model. An absorbable braided suture is often used. Here we are using silk. As the surgeon continues to place knots in the posterior layer, the assistant can hold the remaining threads until the surgeon is ready to tie. Then at the end, the surgeon ties down all sutures and the assistant cuts the knots short. Now we're ready to move on to the second and posterior inner layer of the two-layer hand-sewn anastomosis. Here we see the surgeon anchoring their first suture around two-thirds of the way along the posterior bowel wall. They tie it down securely with four square knots, and the assistant cuts the short end. They leave that needle attached and use a new suture to place a second anchoring stitch in the same fashion directly adjacent to the first, and then the surgeon ties it down. They arrange the sutures as leading in either direction on the posterior bowel wall, and then use one to start sewing towards themselves in one direction. These stitches will be full thickness and will be sewn continuously as a running stitch. It is really important to take full thickness bites that include both the inner mucosa layer and the outer serosa layer, giving important tensile strength to the anastomosis. You can also see here that they're laying them down carefully so that the stitches land equidistant apart with approximately one to two millimeters between each stitch. Now that they've gotten to the end of the flat portion of the posterior bowel wall, in this case, they chose to use the canal stitch to invert the mucosa and sew around the corner of the bowel loop. They do this by first passing the suture from inside to outside of the bowel lumen 
Then once outside, they go to the other side of the bowel and go from outside to inside the lumen. Now on the same side, they go from inside to outside. So the sequence is outside to inside, then inside to outside on each side of the bowel in turn. They do this all the way around the corner edges of the bowel loop. They then pick up the suture from the other side and proceed to sew the inner layer running stitch on the anterior bowel wall towards themselves. Similar to the posterior inner layer, they're taking care to put the stitches at even intervals and to include the submucosal layer with each stitch. If there's an assistant, they can help by following and helping to lay down each suture. Now they've reached the other corner of the bowel and are ready to again use the canal stitch to go around the corner and invert the mucosa as part of the anastomosis. Similar to before, the process is outside to inside, then inside to outside. Here we're going outside to inside then inside to outside on the same side of the bowel. Then crossing to the other side of the bowel and going from outside to inside. Then inside to outside. Then across the bowel and on the other side, outside to inside inside to outside, and the process continues. The surgeon then picks up the suture from the other side and proceeds to sew the inner layer running stitch on the anterior bowel wall towards themselves. Similar to the posterior inner layer, they're taking care to put the stitches at even intervals and to include the submucosal layer with each stitch. So these are full thickness bites. If there's an assistant, they can help by falling and helping to lay down each suture. Once the surgeon reaches the other suture on the side closest to them, the assistant cuts the needle and the surgeon ties down four square knots. This concludes the inner layer running stitch on the anterior bowel wall. Now that the inner layer of the anastomosis is complete, the surgeon unhooks the model bowel from the metal clips holding it down to the simulation board and uses the suture to finish the Lembert interrupted sutures that comprise the outer layer of the two-layer anastomosis. In vivo, this would represent the surgeon turning the bowel to one side for better visualization. If present, the assistant can help here by holding the bowel to expose the surface as shown. As before, these are seromuscular bites, so they would not be full thickness in a true bowel anastomosis. The surgeon is placing all sutures before tying them down and cutting them at the end. Once the sutures are complete, 
The surgeon ties them all down in turn, using square knots for each. Once finished, the assistant cuts the sutures. Now the two-layer hand-sewn anastomosis is complete. Here is the outer layer of the anastomosis, which is the interrupted seromuscular lumbaric sutures. Here you see we can check for any points of gapping or weakness where an additional interrupted lumbaric suture could be placed for reinforcement. Now we turn it over and you can see the inner layer of the two-layer anastomosis, which is the running full thickness sutures and includes the canal stitches around the ends or the corners of the bowel. Following the end of the anastomosis, the surgeon would also want to digitally palpate to check that the lumen of the bowel is sufficient and would check for hemostasis. One other option for practicing end-to-end -end bowel anastomoses using the global surgery box is to use the two white balloons included in the kit. You can puncture them through the nails in the board like this so that they are approximately end-to-end. -end. You can then use the two rolled rubber edges of the white balloons to practice a smaller lumen bowel anastomosis.